Hey, good morning, y'all. Happy Friday to you. Josh with Severe Weather. Thank you for joining me. I am going to talk about the state of the tropics and why you need to start preparing now as we could be off to a pretty quick start here. Uh, and then I'll spend a little bit of time talking about the weather for the United States uh, and the severe weather threat and heavy rain threat coming over the next couple of days. So I'm going to share my screen with you and uh, get right to it. Um, we could be off to a pretty quick start. Um, now is really the time to prepare, not, you know, mid-August, uh, as I think this season could be a little bit different than last year. Last year, we had such a big lull from July to August and then kind of a late, strong season. This year, uh, because we are heading into an El Nino pretty soon, uh, we may be off to a very quick start and areas closer to the coast could be impacted here in the next few weeks with a named storm. Uh, and nonetheless, a very unsettled pattern. We're starting to see coastal lows coming up the uh, east coast. And uh, the pattern looks like it's going to improve for that here in the next few weeks. Uh, and here's a reason, uh, well, I'm gonna show you the names of the storms, then we'll show you the, the reason why. Here are the names for the 2023 season. And my forecast from a few weeks ago was for 15 named storms. That would get us down to about Ophelia. So a little more than uh, two thirds of the way through the list here. I don't think we're gonna see the V's and W's this year because of the strengthening El Nino. Uh, in fact, we may have a very quiet second half of October and November, but, as we all know here in the US, really it only takes one storm. Last year was not super active in the US, but we did have Ian, which waited till the very end of September. I think if the US gets hit this year with a bigger storm, it certainly could be sooner than that. Uh, so in the Gulf on the Southeast coast, really August, September is gonna be your main time frame. but be prepared even in July for potentially a more significant impact. Here's a look at where we're at right now. This is the Climate Prediction Center summary. We're in an El Nino watch, which means we're still neutral, but we are trending towards an El Nino. Now, what the El Nino does is it warms up the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean waters, but it also increases wind shear across the Atlantic, which is not good for larger storms. However, until we get really into that, we still see a low enough amount of wind shear for storms to form. And with the waters remaining above average in the Atlantic, anything that does storm has more or anything that does form does have more storm fuel to it. So with the water staying warm, we have the potential for storms that could strengthen quickly close to the coast. This has happened in the last several years, whether or not we're in a La Nina or an El Nino. And I don't think we're going to see that break down. What this does mean, though, as we get later into the season, as the El Nino strengthens, we will see less development farther out in the Atlantic. And those storms that track across the basin are going to struggle more and more. So this is not a, a 2020 all over again where we see 30 named storms. We will probably see about half of that, give or take a little bit. But what does form certainly does have a lot of potential to it. And really, that's been the case throughout the entire decade. That's more than just the state of the El Nino. So recently, we have seen negative sea surface temperatures anomalies that have weakened, which means um, the cooler than average waters have kind of phased out. Now we're getting more into above average waters. And what that's allowing to happen um, is uh, we are seeing temperatures across the entire Pacific Basin warming, starting first with this region here near Ecuador and Peru, and now spreading into the Central and Western Pacific. Uh, you can see we are finally in the Nino 4 above average. Uh, and what that means is the Pacific is warming. And typically when that happens, uh, we see more named storms in the Eastern Pacific and maybe fewer storms in the Atlantic because of the cycle, uh, because of the wind shear. Uh, we have seen near uh, to above average, even warming up off of the Mexican coastline. So the Pacific could have a pretty busy year. Um, however, that does not mean the Gulf and the Atlantic are totally shut down. Look at how warm things have been over the last month. The uh, majority of the Atlantic, except down over the Caribbean, has been running uh, maybe a few degrees Celsius above the average. This is in the face of cooler than average surface temperatures here in the eastern U.S. You're out there this morning saying, wow, I've got frost or freeze in New England here. And that is not impacting the Atlantic very much at this point. Those waters are still pretty warm and they will continue to be warm through the Atlantic season. So despite the El Nino coming on, uh, we have the fuel, we've got the ingredients in place. Now, I will say over the last four weeks, uh, we have seen, <clears throat> excuse me, the departures from average kind of drop off with respect to normal. Those anomalies are dropping off. So we are trending in the Atlantic closer to more average temperatures. Uh, despite what you might hear on the news, the entire Atlantic Ocean, the entire world 
waters are not warming everywhere. It goes in cycles, even though the average has come up of the entire uh, global waters, which makes up about 70% of the earth, uh, we are not seeing everybody warming. There are blues, which means cooling over um, parts of Southeast Asia, cooling off the Atlantic with respect to average and warming with respect to average over the West. And this is why the West has been so warm, why we have the Atlantic, or why we have the um, wildfires in Alberta, um, and why the uh, air in the Eastern US has been cooler than average, which I am very grateful for here in North Carolina. We've had a lot of hot Mays, and this year has not been that way. It's actually been pretty comfortable with respect to average. Now, as we head, uh, and look at kind of the deeper waters of the Pacific Ocean, we see uh, that recently there is downwelling. Usually upwelling brings cooler water from the, the deeper parts of the ocean up. We see the reverse happening, and that is meaning, you know, we're seeing warmer waters here in the Central and Eastern Pacific. And you can see that here on the uh, graphic. Um, at the same time, and I don't want to get too specific with you guys here, um, looking at wind anomalies, we've seen small areas of weak and positive OLR anomalies, which suppresses storm convection and precipitation near the dateline and over Indonesia. And what that means is that we are seeing um, over this season significant weakening of those low level easterly winds that bring in the cooler waters. And what this means is we have an eastward propagating oceanic, oceanic Kelvin wave. Kelvin waves are areas of increased convection. This is going to propagate eastward into the eastern Pacific this month and maybe towards the end of May into the Gulf or certainly in June into the Gulf and Western Atlantic. When you see the Kelvin waves getting into that area, we see increased tropical activity. And that's why you need to start preparing now just in case something does develop as the waters are above average. They are more than sufficient to, um, to allow us to have potentially a tropical system here. And here's a look at the oceanic heat potential. And in the Northwest Caribbean, in the Southeastern Gulf, uh, we already have um, bath waters, but certainly more potential deeper into the waters for if something forms, it could intensify. We could have an early season hurricane somewhere in here, uh, you know, maybe in June or early July, that certainly could happen, especially the Eastern half of the Gulf of Mexico and the Northwestern Caribbean. A look at the oceanic analysis and we see even over the last week the anomalies have climbed over the gulf uh things are heating up more quickly than they typically would this time of the year that's versus climatology and you can see those brighter colors over the gulf indicating things are warming up faster than usual at the same time you look at the el nino or la nina index and we're still in the neutral zone but we're close to an el nino which is plus 0.5 um so the waters in the pacific are warming as well um, we've got more potential for more storms, especially on the Pacific side, but that does not rule out things here in the Atlantic. Here's a look at the upper level pattern, and you can see this big ridge that's been over the western United States is going to eventually shift eastward, and we have higher heights than average over the northern and eastern parts of the United States, um, especially eastern Canada. You are going to warm up in eastern Canada, but we now see lower than average heights over the southeast. And what this means is cooler air masses and more unsettled weather, more moisture coming from the Gulf into the Southeast. When there's a ridge on top of a trough, um, we have more ideal than average conditions to see tropical activity, even in May. Although this time of the year, something that does form is gonna have a tough time becoming something big. However, you notice as we get through the rest of May, this trough hangs out here and the ridge builds in over central Canada, over the eastern United States. So while the southeast is going to be cooler than, and wetter than average, um, the rest of the, uh, the Atlantic here and the Pacific are going to end up warming up even more. And this pattern, as the wind shear does drop off typically this time of the year, is more favorable for an early season, se uh, early, uh, season storm. I'm going to learn to talk. It's been a busy week for me. And as we get into June, kind of more of the same here. So that's what I'm watching for you all here. Here's the weekly forecast on the Euro. And yes, not the greatest of beach weather in the Southeast. As we head into June, kind of more of the same. You can see that the ridge is well in place over the North Atlantic, ridge over the Eastern Pacific, in between the two active weather expected here. And this does favor um, more active tropical activity. As we get into June and July, the model is kind of trending back to average, but you can see off the east coast we are not above average on our heights which means uh, we definitely have kind of more of an attraction for potential storm action here over the southeastern united states here's a look at the precipitation forecast from the european it's wet over the southwest atlantic and we can see a, a wetter than average pattern here coming off of africa right through the trades and into the intertropical convergence zone 
Um, pretty wet overall here as we get through the first half of June. It does start to get a little bit less wet with respect to average, but notice the East Coast still shows above average precipitation. That goes for most of Florida and the Bahamas, as well as the Northwest Caribbean. It is drier than average over the Southern Caribbean. So uh, the, uh, the general uh, notion for where storms may go is actually gonna be up in here potentially. Here's a look at our current uh, satellite and you can see things are getting busier here over the Pacific. We have wind shear, so nothing organized at this point, uh, but definitely more monsoonal moisture here in the Pacific. If you look out in the Atlantic, we have had some tropical waves uh, come across here early in the season, but nothing that can really get going. Here's a lot of dry air in place over the eastern Atlantic. That's part of it. The other part is that the wind shear is stronger here with westerlies, but the wind shear is not as strong in this region. We just don't have um, any of the cloud cover in place at this point. However, uh, as we look at the wind shear forecast, this is tropicaltidbits.com, the cooler temperatures, the blues here, indicate below average wind shear for this time of the year. And you can see as we get into July and August, the area from the Gulf into the Central Atlantic is predicted to have lower than average wind shear. But El Nino is supposed to bring a stronger than average wind shear. Isn't that right, Josh? Okay, rhetorical question, but yes, that is right. What that means is an earlier start to tropical season. And then as we get into October and November, we see stronger wind shear over the Gulf and over the Southern Caribbean. And that, of course, is not going to be favorable for tropical systems. And by the time we get to November, uh, the waters cool off here and things probably are less likely to get going. So uh, a front loaded tropical season is what I am predicting. And that's what we're going to keep an eye on. Let's shift gears here towards this end of the week and weekend. We have a storm complex over North Texas and Oklahoma. This could bring us some severe weather later today into tonight. A lot of heavy rain as well. Keep an eye on it as it moves to the southeast. We also have a coastal low uh, that's not going to be able to get to a tropical phase at this point. I know it looked like that was a slight possibility, but just a rainmaker here in the Carolinas today. That's going to move up into New England tomorrow. And we have an upper low here in the southwest that's going to continue to pull all that Pacific moisture up into Texas here over the next several days. Quiet weather over the north central U.S. We have an upper low here over central Canada. That's going to move away. It's going to renew the cool weather early next week in the northeast and Great Lakes, but it's going to bring us a pretty dry pattern. And you can see over the next five days, very wet from Florida up the east coast into coastal Maine and New Brunswick. Very wet as well over areas that do need it here in Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. And unsettled across the southeast as we get towards this weekend. The Rockies will also see enhanced moisture while the northern plains and the west coast are going to be relatively quiet. And this is great news for Alberta. We do see a more active storm pattern as our ridge breaks down and much needed rain here to help uh, help out those that are fighting the wildfires that have brought poor air quality all the way into the north central and eastern parts of the United States. The Storm Prediction Center has a slight risk for parts of central Texas, northeast Texas, all the way into the Little Rock, Arkansas area. Um, there will be the threat for a few tornadoes here over north central Texas into southeast Oklahoma and Arkansas, and the threat for a lot of big hail potentially here uh, over central Texas as well as southeastern Oklahoma, and the threat for wind damage in this region as well. The rest of the country is going to be relatively quiet here as we get to the weekend. This is tomorrow, Saturday. Uh, we could have some heavier storms from Georgia to Louisiana and deep south Texas and some storms possible all the way up into New England and the Northeast as well. Um, no widespread severe weather at this point. And then a quieter day for Sunday, um, still a chance for storms in the Southeast. We'll also see maybe some more action here across the interior mountain west, uh, Oregon and parts of Washington as well. Here's a GFS model. You see our front moving southeast, and it is going to bring heavy rain up the eastern seaboard, drawing that coastal low up with it, but then drying things out as we get into Sunday across the northeast. It'll be another cool air mass in place. Uh, the plains are going to heat up here, and more storms are likely to fire here as we get into Monday and Tuesday evening. The southeast stays unsettled. We'll actually see mountain snow over the Canadian Rockies and maybe even the, the uh, Cascades of northern Washington here as it turns quite a bit colder here early next week. So Seattle drops from the 90s to the 60s, it looks like. This front's going to move through the north central uh, parts of Canada. We will have potential winter weather over central Ontario and uh, warm enough for it to be primarily rain. Uh, the east coast will see maybe more coastal low pressure activity here towards the end of next week, while Florida and the southeast stay very unsettled. This will keep the heat down, but it will not keep the humidity down in the southeast. And as this upper low spins here, keep an eye on potentially a weaker system that could form on either side of Florida here in time for Memorial Day weekend. Let's look pretty closely, though, here at the next couple of days. 
and let me uh, move this over here to the shorter range. You see our complex of storms. There's a spiral here moving through Oklahoma this morning. That could bring some severe weather quickly into southeastern Oklahoma. Better chance, though, later in the afternoon into the evening over central Texas, northeast Texas, southeast Oklahoma, and moving into west central Arkansas before midnight tonight. And then quieter weather expected tomorrow as all the weather moves off to the south and east. It will stay cloudy and a little damp here, though, across southwestern Texas here this weekend. Here's a look at Oklahoma real quick, and we see on the NAM model storms moving through Oklahoma City this morning. Then we quiet down, and additional storms fire up over eastern parts of Oklahoma here towards the evening, right along the Red River, um, near and east of Ardmore, all the way over to near Paris, Texas, and then moving into Arkansas this evening. And then you should have a much quieter day for the day tomorrow as it cools down quite a bit here. Looking at Arkansas, we see uh, first wave kind of falls apart here. More storms move in this evening. Uh, they may make it into Hot Springs and Little Rock around midnight tonight and then quieting down by morning tomorrow. And we look much better at that point. Northeast Texas, some severe weather possible, especially towards the Red River, but even Dallas-Fort Worth around 7, 8 o'clock tonight. There'll be the threat for isolated tornadoes, some large hail and damaging winds across this entire area. And then things shift down into the hill country after that, a quieter weekend expected. And in South Texas, real quick, um, we will see storms moving down I-10 here in the overnight hours large hail and maybe an isolated tornado possible here towards San Antonio. And then things quiet down in the morning with more storms possible along the Rio Grande here tomorrow afternoon. Showed you that already. The Southeast is gonna be pretty busy here. Pop-up storms, some of them very heavy over parts of Alabama. Whoops, let me move this forward for you guys here. Uh, but again, yes, parts of Alabama, Mississippi and Georgia could see a few storms, but more likely tomorrow is gonna to be the active day from Atlanta and Birmingham on South and East. Um, we could see a few heavier storms in here. Parts of Florida could get wet again. While the model doesn't really give us a good feel for where that'll be, it's certainly possible. Uh, we see rain in eastern North Carolina today into this evening. That moves up the east coast into New Jersey and into New England overnight, and especially tomorrow morning. It's going to be pretty wet. And then our front moves through. Probably not a lot of severe weather with it at this point. Maybe some heavy rain, though. That will be out of the big cities here tomorrow evening and off the coast here by Sunday. And finally, in the northeast, uh, we see our front moving through Michigan here this afternoon and then storms popping up in western Pennsylvania and western New York this evening. A few storms in eastern Ohio as well. Uh, this rain moves east. It weakens with time and we see just some wet weather across New England tonight and first thing tomorrow and then quieter, cooler weather expected for your Sunday. And I was going to show you temps real quick here, but let me move that forward. A very chilly morning here in New England. We're going to warm up nicely this afternoon into the 60s and 70s, cooler on the coast where those clouds move right up into the 50s in Maine here. Um, tonight, not nearly as cold. Tomorrow's going to be kind of a cool day, though, warm across the southeastern part of PA, but cooler over western and northern New York. Uh, southeast Canada, though, does get to warm up for tomorrow. Then it turns a little bit cooler as we get into next week here, uh, back into the 30s and low 40s here for Monday night lows before temperatures moderate nicely here. And uh, next week, uh, by the end of the week, uh, we are going to start warming up over the Great Lakes. Thank you all so much for your time today. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. We're going to have more tropical videos coming up. I'm taking this weekend off. It's my birthday. I'm going to be celebrating and getting some rest. Uh, next week, I'm traveling Tuesday, Wednesday. No videos those days. But as the tropics heat up, I will continue to keep you all posted. Really appreciate your time today. I give all the glory to God. John 15, 7, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, it will be done for you. And I just wanted to share that with you because I am a believer in God. I'm a Christian and I'm happy to pray for you. I want to encourage you, uh, whether or not you are a believer, happy to pray for you. And, um, you know, do me a favor. If you are struggling and need prayer, I'm happy to pray for you. That's uh, why I'm called to do what I do every day not just to get you ready for the weather, but to serve the greater community and the kingdom by sharing my faith with you and praying for you and asking God and waiting on him to uh, respond and talking with him. Happy to pray for you guys. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'll be a year older on Saturday and then we'll chat again on Monday. God bless you.